the message comes from three different sections of scripture, Matthew, Luke, and Ephesians. It comes from a point in my life that I came to understand about darkness. as you will hear as I begin the opening statement. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, we read, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In Luke 11, 33 to 36, no one when he has a lit lamp puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If there, if then, your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. And when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. Ephesians 5, 3 through 14. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be named among you as a fitting as fitting for saints neither filthiness nor foolishness foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks for this is you for this you know that no fornication unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolatry, idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once dark, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is, a shame, is shameful even to speak to those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who are asleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And I entitled this, of course, The Light of the World. As I remember as a child and a babysitter for my neighbor's children, I would sit up waiting for their parents to get home, listening for the kids' voices and cries because I would need to give them a bottle or change a diaper. During that time, I would sit and watch movies like Them or Whirly Bird. Some of you don't know this. 
videos or Ben Hur. In the movie of them, it talked about a nuclear blast that caused ants to hunger for large amounts of sugar. Now bear with me. And in the process, they only went out at night and they got huge creatures. They became so huge, they'd make this room look like a little, a little small box. Now picture this, it's after dark. The living room is lit with just one light and the TV's on. And as you're watching the movie, in through this trailer house, this ant bursts through in the dark and grabs the sugar in that. That's one of the things that caused me to be afraid of the dark. Another one was the Whirly Birds, and it was about a helicopter and a two-man crew that went around rescuing things and people. The zoo had a gorilla that had escaped. And the farmer is out there. He's in bed, and he hears the cows rustling and bellowing. So he goes out to the barn, and he has this little flashlight. And he noticed there was a little blood at the bottom of the stairs. And so as he goes to investigate, he's climbing the stairs. And as he gets to the top rung, the light shines in the gorilla's face. I jumped. So while that's only movies and about darkness, I have to admit, I have kind of a phobia for darkness. If you don't believe it, ask Donna. I turn every light on when I'm alone at the house. And one of the reasons was that some of the movies were uh, that I watched, plus we'd play hide and seek in the mile, and my twin brother was standing on the rail that hold the siding up. You couldn't put bales on it. And as I come over there, I got kicked in the face. Okay, so there's many things that in my life as a kid that made me very, very fearful of darkness. So I don't go out of the house unless I have some sort of light with me, even now. Um, and I feel like somebody's always watching through a window especially when you think about the aliens that they talked about back then. Um, so that's my issue. And I knew there was a reason why I hated the dark besides that. So you're asking, where am I, where am I going with this? First of all, I want us to understand what the difference between light and darkness is. In darkness, the mushrooms grow, thieves roam, evil lurks, and some animals look for food. But most importantly, it is the absence of light. At night, if you let your eyes adjust to the atmosphere you are in, there is still a portion of light to be seen and you can see things just not very clearly. I think of the time we went out early for deer hunting and we got out there to our stand and as I was walking to my position, I seen the shadow of a deer run right past me and wasn't no closer, to, farther from me from here to the entrance to going down the steps. But it was dark but you can still see certain things. The dark is the host of many different activities that you may not see in the daylight hours. We read about the thief in the night in scripture. And how Jesus said that, you know, if he was going to come and he knew what hour he was going to come, we 
be waiting for him kind of thing. So we don't know when he's going to come. The different kinds of darkness that lurks without our, within our souls is that darkness is the sins that we have not let go of. Mm -hmm. Think about it. And the plague, and they plague our existence as believers in Jesus Christ. It keeps us from truly following him as we were designed to. The darkness is a place where evil lurks the most. And if because most believe that if I do this, or when no one can see me, think about this. I'm going to do this over here. Nobody can see me. Doors are closed, windows are down. Nobody can see me. What about your conscience? What about your heart? When you went over there, you knew it was wrong to start with. Who sees it? What these people do not realize is that your heart will be troubled until you come to you come clean because it will bother you eventually of what you did. To the point of conviction in your heart, mind, and soul. Especially when we are believers and we pull a stunt like this. This happens when things are said contrary to what you have done, such as scripture readings, words spoken against the behavior you have done. The light, on the other hand, is a light that will never burn out. The sun may stop burning and the stars may fall from the universe and the moon may stop showing its light. But the light I am speaking of is the light that shines forever. Jesus tells us in several verses throughout the Bible about the light and where it comes from. The first verse that rings the bell the loudest is John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And John 9, 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What more can we ask for? In Psalms 18, 28, you light a lamp for me. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. I'm not blind to anything anymore as long as we're following God. When we seek the Lord, we are filled with the light of His Word and presence. Micah 7, 8 tells us not to gloat over me, my enemy, though I have fallen. I will rise, Thou, though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. The Holy Spirit also is with us. We should never fear the darkness. But what is the darkness that can harm us? What is in the darkness that can harm us? With the Lord Jesus Christ bringing us light and walking with us in the light, we can no longer have to, we no longer have to fear the dark, but walk in knowing He is with us, no matter where we're at. 
Even in the light of this time, there is darkness all around us. Think about what's happening in today's world. How many children are picked up for child slavery? How many babies are taken from the womb and murdered? Even though it's all around us, our only protection we have is in John, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We can hear about it, we can see it daily, but we don't have to be a part of it. We can stand up. I'm sorry. I thought I had it shut off. <laughs> okay. In summary, prior to our turning to the Lord, the salvation for salvation, we were promised if we would only come to believe. We who believe have walked from the darkness we were once in to the light the, of the Lord. And now there is no more darkness in us. See, we can light up that darkness by having Jesus walking with us daily. And we don't have to be afraid of the dark. He also promises it, but that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always be there for us, with us. We have nothing to fear because the Lord is with us. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing we must remember is that the darkness has no power over the light. It reminds me of the time I walked on, first time I walked on board the submarine tender or dry dock USS Alamogordo and I was the lead food service uh, say officer if you want but the highest rate it all, uh, food service member on board and I walked into the kitchen first thing in the morning and turned the light on cockroaches ran everywhere And I thought, oh, my word. But it gives you an example of what goes on in the dark. And the minute you turn the light on, poof, they're gone. See, evilness works better at night or in darkness. The minute we allow ourselves in that dark environment, what happens? If we don't have Jesus with us, if we're not walking with him on a daily basis, we become part of that darkness. And we must not allow that to happen. We must have our guns blazing with God's word in our minds, hearts, and souls. And no matter what is in the darkness, We're protecting. Why is it important for us to choose where we should walk in this world? I see at least two reasons 
One is because if we choose darkness, we are no better than those who are in of this world. We will stumble and lose our path of righteousness. Two, the devil walks in darkness and waits for us to fail and stumble so that he can pretend to help us back on our feet. Notice I said, pretend to help us get back on our feet. He has no interest in getting us back on our feet. When we walk into that dark hole, he says, ha ha, I got another contestant. Let me see what I can do for him or with him. See, he don't care what happens. As long as he can pull one of us believers away from God, he's succeeded. First John 1 John 1.7 tells us, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. We have no reason to think otherwise. We might have to walk through some darkness to help somebody, but we better have our guns loaded with Jesus' word. Even though when I was young, I was not a believer as yet, I now know why I refuse to have or take a liking to, for darkness. Because Jesus had other plans for me and my future. I have many experiences I can share before I was pulled out of this world. I had I have had life-threatening situations that have no reason to be here except to say that God had other plans. And even so, I come close to death on a few of those. My job was not completed. I can say this. I thank God each day that he gives me to complete the tasks that he has set before me. And I ask you this question. Do you know what God has in store for you today? Will you let him show you? And you, will you answer his call? The bottom line is this. Call out, come out of the darkness, and live in the light of the Lord. And the only way you can do that is say, Lord, forgive me. Come to him and say, I need something different. And what you do then is you repent of all of your wrongdoings. And don't wait another day to do that. Do it now. The darkness is full of evil and uncertainty. Come to the light and live a life with Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Will you turn to hymn 457, please? 